Have you got one radiator that just doesn't heat up? Is it cold at the top, cold at the bottom, or just doesn't come on at all? Well, today on Fix It With Fowler, I've got three ways to fix a cold radiator, and we're going to start with the easiest way. If your radiator is hot at the bottom and cold at the top, that means it's got air trapped inside it. So you're only getting heat in this part. So what we need to do is drain the air out, which allows the water to rise up and fill the radiator. What you're going to need is either a brass bleed key or a slotted screwdriver, depending on the actual bleed valve on your radiator. So on this radiator, I can use either. So if you get yourself some tissue or a cloth, place below and just over the valve a little bit, and then use your valve key, give that a turn. And then when you start to see water coming out, turn that back, make sure it's done up tight and there's no more water coming out. And that is as easy as it gets. If that first method has fixed your radiator, don't forget, give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and I'll see you on the next video. However, if it's not, let's move on to number two. The second reason your radiator might not be warming up is to do with this thing called a TRV valve, and that controls the flow of water into your radiator. Now, often at the start of winter, these can be stuck in position, and they just need freeing off to allow this flow of water. So to remove the head, turn to the number five position that releases any pressure off the head itself. Undo the lock nut and now we can see what we've got. And normally what happens is it's this pin that gets stuck. So we need to free this pin up. So the first thing I'd recommend is get some WD-40 or some lubricant, give it a little spray, get some wire wool or a Brillo pad, Give the pin and round the pin a good clean and that will make sure there's nothing that's causing it to stick and then give that a clean up and now the next thing we need to do is free the pin if the pin is stuck in the down position do not be tempted to get some grips or pliers and pull the pin upwards or indeed twist it if you pull the pin out of this What's going to happen is you're going to end up with a big water leak that you're going to struggle to stop. So under no circumstances, do that. What you need to do is this. So if you get yourself some pliers or something with a soft handle or even a rubber mallet and tap the side of the valve. Now, if you watch the pin on the top, you can sometimes see that rise. And that is enough to free it out of that seat and that will allow the water to pass and free any debris that's built up in there. However, if that's not quite done it, what you can do is get a flat edge of something like your pliers or grips and press on the top of this valve. Now, if you press the pin, you should be able to get that to move up and down. And once that's freely moving up and down, you're then free to put the head back so on. So to replace the head, we've just got to line these up with the nut on the top and then tighten up the lock nut and you can return that back to the original position. Now you can turn your heating on and check that your radiator is heating up. And if it is heating up, then give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment and let me know how you've got on. However, if your radiator is cold at the bottom and hot at the top, we need to move on to number three. Number three then, You've got a buildup of sludge at the bottom of the radiator, which is forcing the water to go up and round, which is why it's hot at the top, cold at the bottom. So we need to get rid of this sludge. And the first thing we need to do is isolate the water supply into the radiator itself. So if we go to the TRV end and turn this all the way down until it's in the off position, 
that shuts this valve and prevents water from entering the radiator. Onto the lock shield end, but before we start to alter that, it's really important that you count the number of turns that we're going to close this by. And the reason for that is it controls the flow and the balance of your central heating. So what you're going to need is either a shifter or a pair of pliers to adjust this lock shield valve. So at the lock shield valve, if you take the cap off, put that to one side, and then if you get your shifter or your pliers and turn that in a clockwise direction. Now we just need to relieve a bit of pressure out the radiator so that when we undo the valves, we don't end up with it squirting everywhere. So just get some tissue placed below the bleed valve, give that a little turn, release some of that water out of the radiator. So the next thing we need to do is undo the valve at one end and release it from the radiator slightly to allow the water to escape. And I've got something special called a plumb tub, but you can use any sort of tub to place under the radiator to catch the water. So get your shifters or your spanner and gently release this valve. And what you'll find is that will start to release the water from the radiator. So as the water drains out of the radiator, it's going to create a vacuum. And to get rid of that vacuum, get your bleed key, put in the end of the radiator, give that a turn, and that will allow air in and allow the water to escape quicker. The next step is to protect your floor. If you've got some plastic sheeting, that's probably the best thing to use. I've just got a couple of old towels because when you lift this radiator off, it's probably going to come off at a bit of an angle and there's every chance any remaining residue or build up a grime will fall out onto your carpet. So now all I've got to do is try and prise these apart and lift the radiator off. So I'm probably just gonna, ah, yeah, right. So that should come off quite easy. So now all you need to do is connect the radiator to a hose pipe. Now just gently turn the tap on. And now we can see what comes out of the radiator. And now all we've got to do is wait until that runs clear. That's the radiator back on the brackets. And we just have to line it up with both the valves at each end. And now we can just tighten them up finger tight to ensure they line up and now we just need to nip up the ends and when we fill the radiator up we can just check that we've not got any leaks. At the lock shield end you now need to open that to the same amount of turns as you closed it before to ensure that the heating system remains balanced. Now open the thermostatic valve all the way so as the radiator is filling up with water, it's forcing the air out. Make sure you're ready with some tissue and your radiator key to shut the valve as soon as water starts to come out. Before you can check your radiator and your heating is working properly, then you may have to put some extra pressure back into your boiler to replace the water that you've just took out. So I've got a video on that that's up on the screen. There's a link in the top corner. Click on that and that will show you how to repressurize your boiler. Real straightforward job. So now you've tested your radiator. If you're still having problems getting the radiator hot or getting any other radiators hot, then what you need to do is balance your heating system. Again, there's a description on the screen and I've put a link in the corner. Click on that and it will show you how to adjust your heating for the maximum heat for every radiator. So I hope you liked the video, hope you found it useful. Don't forget, I've got loads more plumbing, heating, electrics, you name it on the channel. So don't forget, give the video a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, and I'll see you soon.